What's up guys, Ben here from All Authentech and I'm super excited about this one. You know what's in here. It's the brand new DJI Mavic 2 Pro. It has that one inch camera sensor, 4K, 10 bit HDR video. It has that over 30 minute flight time, estimated. Almost 50 miles per hour top speed, estimated. Eight kilometer OcuSync 2 video transmission system, rated. Look at all those sensors under there. That's insane. In the box includes the aircraft, remote controller, power cable, USB 3.0 type C, propellers and spares, battery charger, USB adapter, and a spare control stick pair. There's an RC cable, multiple versions, Hasselblad one inch camera sensor on something this small and portable. Let's get it charged up and go out for some test flights. To fully charge that new 3850 milliamp hours batteries rated to take about one and a half hours. Always remember to download all app and firmware upgrades before heading out. Nothing's worse than getting out in the field and not being able to take off. There's really too much to cover here in just one video and I'll be posting a lot more Mavic videos coming soon, so stay tuned. Now let's just cover some of its key new specs and what my favorite features are. First flight up, I notice a couple things right away. First, those new props really are a bit more quiet, and yes, you can really notice the difference. As I always say, the lower noise equals more inconspicuous, it's less intimidating and irritating, and nice improvement here. Second, the finesse and control with this drone is pretty incredible. It's super stable in air, and if you want precise and slow moves, well, the sticks are fine-tuned and you can accomplish these elegant cinematic shots. Then in a split second, throw the sticks full on in any direction and the drone instantly responds and whips around wherever you want. Now this moves us into sport mode. With the new Mavic 2, it has a new and improved faster top speed, rated to hit 72 kilometers per hour, that's approximately 44 miles per hour. I pulled out my trusty pocket radar gun, made a few passes, and, well, it's actually pretty close. The first couple tries, I learned it takes quite a bit of runway to get it all the way up to its top speed. But I was able to confirm that the horizontal speed in the app was pretty accurate and reflective of the speed gun readings. So then I took it over the water, hit the throttle, both devices showing a top speed right around 42 or 43 miles per hour and that's just shy of that 44 rating. So with optimal conditions, I bet it can actually hit that. Now just be careful and aware of your surroundings. Flying anything this fast is incredibly fun and it's amazing technology, but you gotta respect it and let's fly smart. Now another big feature is the updated and improved ActiveTrack 2.0. There's better object recognition, trajectory prediction, and obstacle sensing. Now this is a big one, and now that the drone has obstacle sensors in all directions, that's forward, back, left, right, top, and down, let's try a test. I set it to track me on the scooter, and it auto found me right away. All I need to do is tap on that little bubble, and it locked right on. Now I go scooting along the trail, and it's following just fine. I'm approaching a group of trees, and I'm intrigued. Will it still follow me? Will it go around or over, or maybe even under the trees with me? Now that'd be nice. Well, much to my surprise, it actually followed me right under the trees, maintaining approximately the same distance while ducking under some branches and keeping a pretty smooth camera shot. Very nice. It's almost kind of addicting to see how the drone auto responds, so I had to try a few more rounds. At first, it's backing up towards the tree, halts, but then it continues to follow me under the trees again, avoiding some large branches, the tree trunk, the ground. Very impressive. Now, I'm super happy it didn't crash, but you can also see how it sort of bobs and weaves mid-air. So it'll be really nice when this continues to get better and smooths out that flight path. Think of that Skydio R1 autonomous drone. It's only time until DJI either buys them out or catches up to their object tracking and obstacle avoidance system. We're almost there. 
Then I go ahead zipping along the path. The Mavic is a little delayed, but hits the gas to catch up. I play some orbit rotation, strafing to the left, and it does well here. Smart enough to stay on the outside of the tree, but still tracking me under and through. This is going to level up a lot of people's cinematic shots as the drone keeps getting smarter and auto follow and good camera quality. It's skimming along, zipping past close up objects. They look like complex shots. Now let's try another one. I go zooming along the path, raising up the drone elevation just a wee bit. Bummer here that it didn't decide to go up and over the trees. Instead, it just stopped short. Better than crashing though. Now on this last test, it was super red. I'm scooting along. I raise up the Mavic a bit higher, just above the tree height. And to my astonishment, the new trajectory prediction actually worked. You can see the little tracker, it falls off. It's searching for me, searching, and bam, it reconnects and then continues to follow. Very fun and impressive. One of my favorite features that few are talking about is the new OcuSync 2.0 and how it's transmitting a 1080p 30fps video signal with low latency and caching that HD footage to your phone. So I was flying the Mavic across the lake. The signal isn't choppy or cutting out at all. It's rock solid. Then I look at my phone screen and I can literally see these tiny little turtles swimming in the water. It's amazing. With this sort of clarity, it'll allow us to help capture shots we might have missed in the past. Now seeing those finer little details will help. And then of course, since our phone is storing that 1080p video feed locally, social media sharing right then and there in the field, it's gonna look better as well. The new hyperlapse mode is really impressive and fun to play with, yielding fantastic results. With a single tap, there's four modes to choose from. You select your interval and video length. For this one, I just locked in a straightforward direction and it'll even let you know if it has enough battery to complete shooting. Then hit go and bam, it's off. Super slow flight forward, auto snapping photos every couple seconds. I paused this flight early and it's smart enough to compile the images I captured so far. I downloaded the video wirelessly to my phone and then viewing that aerial hyperlapse in the field is very rewarding. I just had to try one more and the circle hyperlapse mode, it looks so good with those clouds. It's a little wavy in air and it was pretty windy out that day. However, maybe some future stabilization processing will help with that. Now, of course, the obvious, this new Hasselblad one inch camera sensor is beautiful. It's 20 megapixels, adjustable aperture, wide open at f2.8, with a narrow depth of field, almost looks like a DSLR is mounted on a drone. It can even shoot HDR photos, which by the way, look nice, good dynamic range. A few key specs for us camera nerds who really care about this stuff. I mean, it is a one inch sensor on a portable drone after all. The field of view is 77 degrees or about a 28 mil lens equivalent. Max video bit rate, still 100 megabits per second. On this note, I'm happy to see that it can shoot 10 bit D-Log M video. This is great for advanced post-processing control. However, I am very sad that the Mavic 2 Pro does not offer that 4K 60 frames per second. I'm not positive, but I have this feeling that this camera and processor could definitely handle it. Even my old Phantom 4 Advance can shoot 4K 60, but maybe they locked it down for future models or other products. Is that Phantom lineup coming back or is it fading away? What are your thoughts? Let me know down below. Sorta a bummer on this one. Now, thankfully, it can shoot 2.7K at 60 FPS. Also possible is slow motion, 120 FPS at 1080p. Something I appreciate, each of these shooting modes still look nice. Another new gimbal feature, it can finally tilt up quite a ways, up to 30 degrees positive. Now, of course, if you want full gimbal tilt range, you'll have to check out the Pair NFE I recently reviewed. That drone's camera can tilt all the way up 90 degrees since there's nothing blocking its view. However, I'll still gladly take this 30 degrees tilt up bonus on the Mavic 2. It's better than nothing and it's fun and helpful looking up at trees or other subjects, capturing a fresh perspective. Now my other two big wishlist items that was not found on this Mavic lineup. First, those side obstacle sensors, they only work in active track and tripod mode. I'm not sure why on this one and sort of bummed to have that 360 degree all around bubble shield protecting the drone in any flight mode is the dream. 
Now, secondly, I wish it had that detachable camera and gimbal system, just like what GoPro tried to do with their Karma Drum. That sadly failed. To have this one inch Hasselblad camera with a 3X gimbal detach and run and gun, that'd be amazing. So this is it, the hot off the press DJI Mavic 2 Pro. Price isn't super cheap. However, considering all the impressive tech, flying specs, and camera features, it's definitely worth considering for many prosumers out there. All pricing and links are down below. Make sure you stick around for all my other drone and Mavic videos coming soon. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, let's live authentic.